getting to the point where it's filled. I know, it just, and then they fade it out. And it's like, okay. All right, Alright, hey everybody, welcome to the Atheist Experience. Gotta stay on their toes in the control room. I know, they, yeah. those guys are awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm your host, Matt Delaney, joining this week, Martin Wagner. Hi. That was uh, music by the church, as you can see down there in the lower third. This is the Atheist Experience, it's a live public access television, blah, blah, television, telephone call-in program where you can call in and talk to us about uh, well, pretty much anything. Uh, you can find out more about the show at atheist-experience.com, but we're sponsored by the Atheist Community of Boston, a nonprofit educational organization that promotes positive atheism in the separation church and state, and the ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday at Romeo's on Barton Springs Road, except for the first Sunday of the month when we host a lecture series at the Austin History Center located at the corner of 9th and Guadalupe. This was the first Sunday of the month, uh -huh. and since we couldn't get a real lecture, uh -huh. I did it. Oh, okay. uh, I did it my way. I did a little bit of uh, mentalism and talked a little bit about uh, fooling the mind and, and the thought processes that, that go into all the predictions that we make all day long, every day. It's, yeah. it's how we function. Yes. Um, I don't know for sure if that one's going to be available uh, online, uh, but stay tuned. Most, as, as some of the, all of my old lectures and some of the other lectures are available at the ACA website. You can go to atheist-community.org for more information about the ACA. There we go. I can, I can move, and the white blocks out different letters at different times. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, you can go there and find out I more think about they can the read ACA, it just fine. and there are links to the programs as well as links to the lectures, and the lectures that are available to view online are there as well. The audio portion of this program is available for download and as a podcast. The video is available at Google Video uh, for now. We're looking into other solutions, and thank you to the people who uh, sent us email uh, talking about other opportunities and ways to do it. Um, we haven't decided yet. We're, we'll keep looking, and for now, I think we're still okay. Uh, or at least we were for last week, post, yeah. posting up to Google. And if you hadn't heard what this is all about, apparently Google, for reasons best known to themselves, are getting rid of the Google Video. They're getting rid of the ability to upload. Oh, okay. They're not getting rid of Google Video. At least that's what we've been told. Is it just like a temporary hold thing, or are they just not uh, uh, they're no, just they're stopping the... Because uh, what's the point of having this it? This is a project People that can't that upload more videos, I would wonder. Yeah, well, the point of keeping it is to keep all the videos that currently exist out there. Okay, so in other words, it's like they've hit a server capacity issue, maybe. No, they've hit a manpower issue. Oh, okay. uh, they're, evidently, that one Yeah, because it's not like they have money or anything. <laughs> well, the, the projects that don't make as much money, that's what you cut. And since they yeah. also own YouTube... Well, that's a point. Yeah. Um, so... That uh, would be the reason, then. I mean, if they, if they own YouTube and YouTube gets all the traffic, then... Why it have, could be. Why have Google Video? It's redundant. Well, so. it's not completely redundant. But anyway, we're way the hell off topic. We're just, from, yeah. Yes. So this is what we do. We just kind of... Welcome. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get us back on track here. Mm. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 announcements and blah. blah, 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 blah. Talk about... Uh, did you do Dog and Duck? Video, did you do... You know? After the show, we go to... Oh, in addition breakfast. to this program, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly internet audio podcast called The Nonprofits. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. You can go to nonprofitsradio.com for more information about that program. See, the guys in the booth knew where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice... I know. I'm just here to, like, completely... Yes. <laughs> Martin is here to lead us astray. Yes. And, that's and, what I do yeah. best. And, mm -hmm. you know, lest there be any confusion, that's, that's the entire purpose of the show, is to lead people astray. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the audio portion, or the, the actually, audio is the only portion of the nonprofits, but you can get that as a podcast or a download. Uh, you can find out more information about that show at the website. We're live every other week, uh, or either Saturday from 2 to 3.30 Central. Um, we will be live next Saturday. It's hosted by Dennis LeBay, features myself, Russell Glasser, uh, Schilling, Thad Engling, and um, we'll be live next week. Sweet. Yeah. In addition to the various media outreach uh, efforts, the ACA also hosts a number of social events throughout the week, including Atheist Happy Hour at the Dog and Duck Pub every Thursday at 7 o'clock, and that's at the corner of 17th and Guadalupe. Uh, and after this program's over, everybody involved gets together for dinner at Threadgills mm -hmm. on Riverside. Uh, we're on the air till 6 o'clock, and we'll be down there at Threadgills around 6.30 or so. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to come to any of our events. You don't have to be a member, but if you come down to preach, proselytize, or provoke, please don't. Just pick up the phone. There's the P's and even the phone. Yeah, yeah. Pick up the phone and call in, and you can talk to us. We're actually, today we're not, we're not having a topic. We are doing, we are continuing it's, the yeah. Martin and Matt experiment of uh, open phone calls. calls. Yeah, open calls. So, uh, particularly um, if you're a theist of one stripe or another uh, and, and wanted to find out more about atheism or explain what you believe and, and why, um, those are always interesting calls. We have some calls waiting from uh, outside the Austin area because we are streaming the show live over the Internet every week now, for those of you who haven't actually heard. 
Um, you can go to Ustream.tv and they'll put a link up for you shortly. You can watch live uh, over the internet. Yes, you can. It's nifty. It, it's, it's something else. That's and the internet folks get like uh, a few minutes of pre-show stuff and maybe yeah. sometimes and with the a chat few and everything. So, so we have actually kind of gotten in the habit of after we go off the air here in town, we'll still take a two or three calls if there are some stragglers hanging on and just chat with them while the rest of the set gets broken down. So. Well, that's interesting. We have two calls already on that are almost about the same thing. Right. We could. Uh, one of those is the fellow that called. Yeah. Before. Let's more. go back. Is it? Is it Magnus? Yeah. How Hi. are you doing? You're calling from Copenhagen, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Now. So uh, now you're actually on the show. Yeah. I think I'm actually the third person from Copenhagen to call uh, <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It was, yeah. Hey, one of these days I'll get over there, and the three of you can take me out for dinner. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> No problem. Um, well, uh, as I was uh, stating, um, if, if, as you go through it again, I guess. Sure. Uh, yeah, um, just a brief. Yeah, for all the people who are watching live in Austin that didn't get to hear it, just uh, a little bit about what you were talking about. Yeah, well, my, my argument is that in Denmark, where we didn't get the separation between church and state, um, we, uh, we instead have... Uh, uh, pseudo separation between church and state, which means that the churches and the ministers in the churches are paid paid on the, uh, from the taxes from the people. Mm -hmm. And um, you're automatically a member of the Danish church, as it is when, you, uh, when you're born. And, but this has actually made a peculiar, uh, that's a peculiar reaction to that, because nobody believes in Denmark. Mm -hmm. The the churches are completely empty on Sundays. The, the, I think the only period that they're actually full is in the, in the Christmas, and it's just for uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, just the uh, holiday service. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I know that's uh, that's an interesting phenomenon is that we see, and it but it tends it tends to be a Western European thing. Mostly, where you have uh, these uh, countries with official state churches, state religions. And in those countries, religion is sort of dying on the vine. Even in England, where I think not long ago, you someone, well, I don't think it was the Archbishop of Canterbury, but somebody certainly very high up, essentially threw up his hands and says, well, atheism is one over here. Uh, in Norway, I think, what, it's 10% church attendance? Uh, so yeah. there, but it's, again, that seems to be a, a Western European phenomenon, and you mentioned a downside to yeah, in you know, there there are yeah. some countries that are you know where there's no church state separation where um, you essentially have a theocracy and and not a particularly uh, decent one. I mean, obviously anywhere where there's not separate church and state, where you have an official state church, you have a theocracy. The problem is that not all theocracies are created equal. And but the point is that those states are secular, are not secular states. I'm and sorry. Denmark is a secular state. Right, whereas like Iran is very much a well, see, Muslim. Now, now I'm kind of confused because if there is no separation, separation of church and state and you have an official state religion, I don't see how you can actually be a secular state. Because the, the, the church doesn't have any power. It, how can they not they're have not in, power? They're not in the, the three branches of power in any way. Okay, I think so, what he, okay, so you, you have a church that is yeah. the official church but it has n no power, no... It's funded by the taxes. And it's paid for by the taxes. But you're saying yeah, it, they, it, it they wields no... Land and they have some relics and yeah. the Okay, and I stuff. think that's probably a great way of, an effective way of getting rid of religion because you've eliminated competition in the first place. Other churches don't have the opportunity to spring up. Yeah. However, it, it's also a good way of eliminating basic freedoms and uh, I'm not in favor of that, and I'm certainly not in favor of my tax dollars going to pay ministers of any church, even if it means getting rid of the other churches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have freedom of uh, religion in Denmark, but... Uh, so but only one, only one church gets taxpayer money. Yeah. And you, you, Muslims are pretty upset about it. Yeah, and I think, and and it would be very bizarre to me, uh, you know, even to live in some sort of tolerant and ostensibly secular country, to know that the minute I was born, I was automatically enrolled as the member of such and such a state church. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's that yeah. seems so. In a sense, there it's well, 
but then at the same time, these, you say that these churches wield no political influence, even though they get tax money. And to me, that's the interesting point that you bring up, because one of the arguments that I've made, I, I, I take the rare point of view among American atheists that uh, I'm all, I've been all for tax exemption of the churches, where a lot of atheists yeah. are like, oh, tax the church, tax the church. I'm like, no, 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 because uh, my argument has always been, if you tax the churches over here, then with all of the political power that religion already wields in this country that is supposed to have separation of church and state, you suddenly yeah. start taking what would amount to hundreds of millions of dollars in tax money from these mega churches that we have here that are the size of stadiums. I mean, they have 30,000 people turn up you know, every Sunday. Uh, then it seems to me like you, the, the church can just walk right in the front door of any you know, congressman's office that they want and say, all right, we paid X million dollars in taxes this year, therefore we demand uh, creationism in, this, in the schools. Here are the list of schools that our, our students attend. Here are, the, uh, here are the taxes that we pay. Here are the taxes that our uh, congregation pays to, to support all this. And now we're going to make this, 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 this and this demand. Uh, well, and and but see, that's, that's, that, that, that to me is, and they would have, now they've, they've got enough power as it is to sort of you know, be a real, real nuisance in terms of making those demands already, just imagine if they had the, the strength of saying, oh, well, but look at all the taxes that we pay behind them to, even, to, to, to bolster those demands. But it would get even scarier. But, no, no, but apparently that's not happening. No, that's not it, what we see why would it? Why time. would it get any scarier? They're already wielding as much influence as they ever possibly could because nobody... Well, I, I think they could nobody, wield potentially, potentially Nobody could more. walk in and say, I pay X amount of dollars and therefore you will do this. If I'm an elected official, the correct answer is no, sorry. Uh, you don't yeah. get to do that. Well, except no, but it's called lobbying, right? I mean, then you have I, do you yeah. have you when don't you think have they lobby anyway. Well, but what I'm saying is they could be more aggressive. You know, they could just come in, come right in and right, say, "Look, do this for us, or you will you'll be going home this time." Or you'll what? You'll it. not pay the taxes that we're charging you. Tough shit. You're paying them. Or, or we'll we'll vote you out. We'll end your political career, and we'll bring in a guy who's more amenable to our demands. Okay, but they can do that anyway, well, whether they're paying taxes just or not. To, uh, or, yeah, anyway, yeah, but we're getting a. Uh, I'm just saying. Um, just a yeah. side note to the to this comment, uh, comment about uh, separation and church and uh, state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. I should say that we have the possibility of um, of uh, not paying. We can just uh, we can just go out of uh, or either resign from the from the membership. So we don't have to pay the the, the, the church tax. We have a church tax in Denmark. But still, some some of uh, the financial uh, budget. Still contains uh, revenues for church buildings, and uh, it's, not, it's not completely separate. I can't get I can't get away from paying for this, hmm. but um, but I can't do it. I can. Uh, I'm not a, a member of the Danish uh, ch right. ch church as it is today. Hmm. So, so you're saying that you can decline your membership in the Danish church, yeah. and doing so. You can opt out of paying the church tax. Was that what? Or yeah, it's, uh, I think it's about the one point five percent tax or something like that. Huh. But but even after you opt out of paying for the church tax, some of your taxes still goes to the church. Still up trickling. Through. Yeah, because the church is on the finance law uh, in the day in, in mm -hmm. Denmark. Okay. So that's they, a hell of a scam the they pulled off. Yeah, that's that's actually kind that, of, that's what it is. That's a heck yeah. of a scam that this church has pulled off. Also, yeah. we we have also we have a secretary of of the churches in Denmark. Hmm. A secretary. Uh, in fact, the funny thing is, it's called a minister. I'm sorry. It, it's called a minister. Okay. Um, uh, 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 like uh, your secretary of state. Uh huh. That would be our uh, minister of state and, in and, Denmark. And yet, funny, and, isn't it? <laughs> see, this is all kind of baffling because, on the one hand, you've got an official state church that gets some tax funding, and yep. has essentially a minister, a secretary of church. Uh, yep. Or whatever, um, yeah. and yet you have a, but it's just a secular it's, state. It doesn't, it doesn't mean with, that there are preachers. No, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, we know. And yet, in addition, but despite that, you have a secular state where you have freedom of religion, and right. this state church doesn't wield any power. But, but it's because we I have think a, one of those isn't quite accurate. Yeah, but it's because we we descended from oh, oh, the, the the previous rule was a monarchy, and and the servants of the kings were ministers because the king was empowered by God. 
Right. Mm-hmm. So it's more. So the, so the ministers, the name of the ministers is still just preserved. It's right. It's a ceremonial priests, tradition but, thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. tradition. But it's funny in a way that we have still got. Uh, yeah, it is. It seems well, like there's a whole lot of uh, just internal contradictions within the system. But, yeah. yeah. The big thing is, though, as a, as a potential solution, um, I still prefer uh, a, a clear and properly enforced church state separation. I mean, yeah, one where. You know, even, even if I found out it was. It, for example, it would be effective. An effective way to eliminate uh, belief would be to simply make it illegal for anybody to. Uh, speak out about beliefs without providing solid evidence for it. Boom. Wow. All of a sudden you're done with TV preachers, etc. That would be effective. I could never possibly support that because that is a violation of some of the core principles that I value. The ability yeah. for them to speak about what they believe, um, no matter how unproven or crazy I might think it is, um, that freedom extends to everybody, and it should. Mm. But... Anyway, we've got another caller on the line, and uh, yeah, thanks. And then we yeah, talked no, about church state separation too. So yeah, and we're thanks a lot for, for for all that information. That was interesting. Yeah, and thanks for your show. Thanks, appreciate it. Bye. Yeah, in, informative, and yet I'm still. A bit, it, it seemed a little bit strange. I think that there, what he was suggesting was there's just a whole lot of traditional baggage with yeah. the way it's been done in the past that they haven't really quite found out a way to be consistent about applying. You know, and, and drawing that balance between what your rights are as a free citizen of Denmark and how this church gets to be supported by the state, and and yeah, it's and, a, and the whole, and, and I thought the strangest part was okay, you can opt out of paying the church tax, but then there are other areas of the tax code in in uh, I guess finance that the church gets to draw some revenue from in the yeah. taxes as well. So regardless. The church is still getting some of their money over there, and well, that would that would be a thing I'd find very troubling. We we may get back to the church cha- yeah. church taxing issue, but we've got AJ in uh, Gulf Breeze, Florida. Yep, and uh, you're a little low, uh, just as soon as you connected me. Um, but it's okay; it'll probably fix itself. Um, um, I'm not sure. I think in other states this has happened, but recently in my county, there's been a ruling on religion and school because uh, Pace High, which is near me, had a principal doing uh, prayers before, or prayers in homeroom after the pledge, Mm -hmm. which uh, outraged some parents. And um, then they passed this, and now um, the deal is that anything with Christian in it, like Christian athletes, etc., not allowed, and New Street says they're sick of me, um, and... uh, what else? Oh, yes, and the teachers can't say God or prayer or anything like that, apparently. Mm. Uh, I think I think we might be making a mistake if exactly. they're actually wording things that say you can't mention anything Christian because now you've yeah, that's, you've, you've targeted a religion. Right. The, the correct thing... Not too far the other direction. Yeah, the, the, the correct application is that... Um, and, and in Illinois, I think it was, where recently uh, the federal court ruled that the moment of silence as applied there, was a violation of church state separation as well. Um, I, this, this gets back to what you were talking about in, uh, in our, with our previous caller in, in that church state separation is a concept that needs to be properly enforced, and part yeah. of the way of properly enforcing that is to make sure everybody understands exactly what it means. It's and I have heard of weird. situations, or I think I read a situation some months ago that Ed Brayton reported on his blog where he talked about some school teacher being uh, reprimanded and, and forced to take off. She had a necklace with a cross on it, and they made her take that off. It's, it's yeah. like, no, that's not what separation yeah. of church and state means. And so uh, I, I worry that what you have are now people who are so afraid of lawsuits that, oh, yeah. that, you, that you go, they go too far in the other direction trying to shut down all religious. Uh, I mean, cr- Christian groups like Young Life and FCA, if they want to, you know, it's entirely legal for them to have their meetings on campus after school hours and all that sort of thing. That's never been uh, improper. And so uh, it concerns me when it goes too far the other direction because then it's just yeah. backlash after backlash. And not only that, but you get the, the, the kind of narrow-minded reactionaries on, for example, the Christian fundamentalist side uh, who say, see, I told you those atheists want to take every reference to God mm-hmm. out of public life and uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's it, the it's thing just, I'm worried about. It, it, you know, it's silly. We need to, what we need to do is make sure that people, uh, 
It, it's, it reminds me of he who shall not be named in his uh, lawsuit against the bumper sticker. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that's not, that's not where we're going. Yeah, that's, yeah. The yeah. Constitution doesn't say you have a guaranteed right never to be offended ever. Yeah. yeah that, and and it, isn't, it isn't about people being offended. It's about what the school as a taxpayer-supported government institution, as it were, can or cannot do in regards to mm -hmm. how it uh, confronts religion. That's so, what it's so about. So what did they actually decide? I mean, apart from, I don't know if you have the text of what they decided or... I don't, but I, I, I've got the general idea because we discussed it in my sociology class. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, because the Christian, uh, uh, Christian athletes was named, praise at the flagpole. I can understand why they wouldn't allow that, but the rest of the stuff off campus. You know, the meet at the flagpole stuff, I think that's constitutional yeah. as well. Because they were oh, yeah. what, doing it before school hours? Yeah. yeah. I think they were, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, 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 that's kind of like a nationwide thing where those kids who want to pray before school get together and go out to the flagpole and, right. and pray. Yeah. The number one misinterpretation about this whole no prayer in schools thing is that people think that it means no prayer in schools. And yeah. that is yeah, absolutely that. not what it means. It means this, the school cannot sponsor an oblig uh, obligatory prayer, right? Oh, yeah. you, know, a, a, you know, a forced prayer that you have to like sit in. A, you know, I, the principal who is doing it as part of the pledge, that's a problem because yeah. it puts the students in a situation of feeling like I have to participate in this. This is obligatory, uh, but you know, it's entirely legal for any student on of their own accord. They can take a Bible to school. They can take a Bible into their classes. They can pray at their desk. You know, before each class, they can pray at the lockers. They can they can pray until they can drop to their knees and pray until they're blue in the face on their own. That's yeah. a private matter. Yeah. And and then of course th there there are limits too. And I would hate to think that people would would uh, you know obviously we're going to get some people trying to abuse it when mm -hmm. yes you can take your Bible into the classroom. But guess what? When the class is actually reading something and talking about it and having a discussion, you don't get to sit there and do a Bible study in the class because you're in that class to learn whatever yeah, we're talking exactly. about. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you get over to study hall and you have specific requirements there about what you can and can't do, this isn't a trampling of your yeah. rights to hold a belief or, or practice your beliefs. That's not it at all. Mm -hmm. I know. It's been an annoying situation for me because I'm a well-known atheist at my school. Everyone's like, oh, you must be happy now. Uh. Well, and then then it's actually an opportunity yeah. um, for you to to point out you know where you disagree and why. Oh, you yeah, think that, I do all yeah. the time. Yeah, and and what that does, um, hopefully, if enough people actually do it, is it changes the perception that people have. Um, you know, you may never reach enough people to really make big changes, but you know, as long as people don't have this view that you know. I hate religion, and I hate everything about religion, and I'm going to get rid of your religion no matter what it takes me to do it. You know, that's just not what anybody, well, what most rational atheists <laughs> are trying to do. I'm sure there's somebody out yeah, there who would happily do it. Yeah, chops in every crowd, you know, there's one uh, in every crowd, but still, it's not yeah. that it's, uh, yeah. it's certainly not a position that we advocate. You know, big problem with me noting this is uh, the only class I have in that has intelligent discussions would be sociology. And then the class I have before that flattened where there's a girl that thinks she's cold-blooded. I know. <laughs> you mean like a reptile, like cold-blooded, yeah, like biologically? She, she... she just complained of being cold at once and she said, I must be cold-blooded. I'm like, you're a mammal. You can't be cold-blooded. And she got into this big argument with me. Yeah, yeah. Cold-blooded doesn't mean you're cold all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, when she finishes the Latin class, she can go take a biology and apply go to biology class and apply some of that Latin. But, I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, actually, I think she said she passed biology. I told her she was lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she could have passed it and just got that one question wrong. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, she, she passed she might, it with yeah. a 95 or something, or, or a 7. Yeah, that's frightening. Passed it with a C minus or what have you. It, it, it's also, and, and you know, not to spin forever harping on one little point, but um, it also goes to the common mistakes that we make with regard to language where you, you don't normally learn how to speak by sitting around reading a dictionary. Yeah. Um, you learn from context and you... Yeah, read stories. Right. And then you, if you misunderstand the meaning or the context of the first time or several times of using a particular word, then light, you're very mm -hmm. likely to start misusing it yourself. And, you know, and she may not know what cold-blooded means or, or anything else. Like, anyway, I don't want to hmm. spend forever uh, on a science uh, misperception. So there's the one girl in the class that um, doesn't know what derivatives are. And we're talking about definitions. She says, I don't know what derivatives are. And the teacher's like, I don't doubt that. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thanks, AJ. Mm. Having to head on yeah. to some other calls now. Appreciate right. you calling back in. Yeah. All right. Very much. We've got Tyler here in Austin, correct? Yep. How you doing, Tyler? How's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? We're great. Good. Um, I have a fundamentalist uh, Christian as a friend, and I've been talking to her um, recently about her beliefs, and I've been trying to understand them. Um, and as you can imagine, there is some conflict, uh, and things kind of broke down this last week. But I, so I just have some general questions for you guys um, along the lines with, of if I'm going about this the right way and talking with her. Um, well, those, first, those discussions can get emotionally fraught. Yeah, so I, I understand. It's not and I've been, yeah. I've been trying to uh, be very careful because I know that religion is something very important to her. Um, but my first question, uh, and this it kind of goes for you, Matt, because I know that uh, you've been a Christian and have been a strong believer. Uh, this is something that I asked her, and she wasn't able to. Every time I asked her, she just kind of dodged the question, and I never uh, really got an answer. I lost audio in here. I, I oh, think I can still can hear, you guys me hear me in the booth, but I lost audio out here. So, Tyler, don't hang up. Yeah. They're going to... They're gonna, yeah. Okay. They're going to look at the audio. Yeah, I've, oh boy, are the uh, the so the techie uh, elves are as a as a quick sidetrack. Um, there is no live show next week. I've been told to let everybody know that next week there will not be a live show on Sunday, February two thousand nine. Um, I'm I'm assuming we'll be back the week after that. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I, th I imagine it has something to do with the fact that Pac's new season start started, and we might have lost a slot for a week or had to compensate for a week or whatever. Hmm. Um, in any case, we won't be on live next week, uh, but we'll be live uh, a week after that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. now that we have more technical difficulties, Tyler, just keep hanging on. Yeah. Assuming that the phone doesn't hang up on you, uh, we'll get you back at some point. Okay. All right. um, also, today Sorry. is Super Bowl Sunday, which means... That's right, yeah. A bunch of, uh, there's a big football game yeah. happening. Thing, which means so. there's two groups of people who are desperately praying that their team will win. And, <laughs> yeah, roughly half of them will get their wish. Well, apparently Obama's for the Steelers, so, yeah, there you go. That's all you need. Yeah, okay. the red light's on the thing. Yeah. So, there's an amusing scene going on behind the cameras where people are scrambling, and uh, we're just trying to figure out... Apparently this happened, these kinds of things. Yeah, it's, popping it's up. Russell's fault. He's actually here mm -hmm. and brought his bad luck with him because, you know, we're superstitious like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, uh, one of the things is that um, because it's Super Bowl Sunday, it's a very good chance that we won't be getting a lot of local calls. Um, so if there are people who are watching the show um, over the Internet who wanted to call in, uh, I was going to encourage you to go ahead and do that, and we'd try and fire through as many calls as we could. Uh, unfortunately, we shouldn't be having any problem with the calls. Well, trapped. so let's go back, uh, you and I. Well, I think if we can talk in a general sense. We can just address Tyler's problem with his concern yeah. over. You're gonna, have... yeah, uh, play music. With the play music. North. Yeah. Uh, we uh, the whole problem that is when you're talking to friends, where you are worried about first of all, you like this person. That's a concern. Always remember. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Uh, that in, little interlude from the church from Australia, folks. Uh, try to try to couch what you say to them in the term of you know in terms of hey, ask me some questions. As, you know, if you have have some questions for me about why I don't believe, maybe I can answer those. Well, you know, let them uh, you know sort of get the water warm. Yeah, and I actually actually try to spend um, as much time asking questions as discussing actual issues. So, if, for example, if I ask somebody why they believe or, or why they, they say they believe, um, there's a number of different answers that can come back, and they may not, they may not have a good answer. Um, they may not even be completely sure why they believe. And yet, you can be, you could be in a position where you believe sincerely and not be able to verbalize why mm -hmm. you believe. Yeah. Um, maybe not, maybe perhaps you don't completely understand why you believe. So don't be surprised um, if they don't instantly uh, have an answer or they don't you know they're uncomfortable trying to give an answer. That's and and if you go back and watch you know yeah. the old episodes of shows that's insanely common. 
Yeah. Um, I cannot. By the way, if somebody can actually talk to Tyler on the phone, um, but not in here. Hello. Uh, Tyler, hey, I can back? hear you. Yeah. Hey. Oh, we fixed it. All oh. right. So we yeah, yeah, yeah. the control room guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, Your Give turn to talk. Okay. okay. Uh, well, along the lines of what you were saying, Martin, about uh -huh. getting her to ask me about my beliefs, uh, I've actually tried to do that because I didn't want this to be a one-sided conversation, mm -hmm. and I wanted sure. her to understand where I was coming from so I could better understand where she was coming from. Right. But uh, she just seemed generally disinterested and never asked me anything, never questioned, mm -hmm. nothing. So... Anyways, uh, well, was, it was probably question. very intimidating to do ask her to do that, and so she just kind of shut down at that point. That can be a reaction you get. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to ask think, you questions because I don't want to know about not believing in God because I don't want to even go there. Yeah, I think that's the case, and yeah. she's very sensitive about not insulting another person's beliefs, and she's fine with people believing whatever, and so am I to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, my first question uh, was, and this is kind of directed towards you, Matt, okay. is why do the Christians that believe, uh, the type of Christians that believe the Bible is literal, that it's a true account of all of God's deeds, how can they believe that he is good when he does so many atrocious acts in the Bible? Do you have any ideas on that? Like, why do people believe that? Okay, I'm going to have to preface this with one, qu one quick exception. Despite okay. people who claim that they believe the Bible literally, I've never met a single person who actually literally believed everything in the Bible. Uh, and, and I think it may actually be an impossibility. But for the people who generally think that the Bible is accurate and, and that you know God did this and God did that um, and that these are accurate representations of the character, um, they don't have a good answer. What The, the only thing that... or I, I was going to say the best thing, but it, it's, it's really not the, that way... Uh, there's, there's one option, and that's this idea of divine command. And that is that whatever God says or does is necessarily morally right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what our perception of that act was, because we, don't, we are unable to see the big picture the way a God can. Um, and, and this is, so the question that, that I had usually had to follow up with this is, okay, does that mean that it was... If it was moral for God to do this, would it be moral for a person to do this as well? Um, right. And, and if the answer is no, then you're claiming that there's one set of morals uh, for a God and, or this God, and they're at his whim to change or do however he wants, mm -hmm. and another set of morals that govern us and our behavior. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I reject that out of hand. Um, the idea that... It, that uh, it would be, you know, I'm, I realize that it, we, we can discuss the difference in situational ethics and, and things like that, but the idea that it would be immoral of me to kill someone, and yet if you replace me with God in those exact same circumstances, it would be morally correct for God to do it. I, I reject yeah. that. I, right, well, then, yeah, I mean, the shorter, the shorter version of that is just, you know, someone who takes a leadership position of do as I say, not as I do, yeah. loses the moral high ground, and I think loses the moral authority. Um, and, and also, that argument, that defense of, you know, God's atrocities or what have you, essentially is supporting the notion of might makes right. Uh, which I think you can also claim to have serious moral objections to. It's the because, I brought you into this world, I can take you yeah, out thing. Yeah. And there are people who think that, okay, yeah, in the flood, uh, God actually did flood the entire world except for those eight people and animals on the ark. And that's because everybody else had it coming. They were really bad and they deserved it. And, you know, the, the typical response immediately is, okay, so you're talking about even the little babies that drowned deserved that too? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, yeah, uh, in, in the sense that they were part of the society, and God knew that they were going to grow up to be bad. They're the result of fornication, and yeah. therefore tainted. Well, if God knows that they're going to grow up to be bad, he knows what everybody's going to be doing. He knows what, you know, it's absurd. You cannot get to a coherent position that doesn't just make a flat-out exception, a, a bit of special pleading for the God character. And I, I, I can't buy it. So to answer your question, I have no idea what answer they could possibly come up with uh, that that would even be remotely acceptable. Well, I had some conversations like this with Christians back when I was hosting the show in the day, like before we had this big internet phenomenon, uh, just a local access show that maybe 25, 30 people were watching. But we would get uh, Christian callers, uh, and, and we would bring up, for example, one, exa 
One example of a, a godly atrocity in the Bible is in um, you know, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23 mm -hmm. to 24, the sending the bears to slaughter 42 children because... I actually pointed that out to her yeah. specifically. And let me guess, let me guess. She, if she answered you, she... Uh, oh, there's suddenly, several options. Yeah, the, well, the, the, the response that I got was... And it, it, suddenly the Bible starts saying whatever they want it to say at this point. Yeah. You know, the big book of multiple choice becomes the big book of choose your own adventure at this stage because suddenly the, 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 the children become this gang of youths, yes. dangerous, you know, suddenly they're no longer children, they're these 17, 18 year old tough punks. They're crips. Who, yeah, and they're out to uh, do bodily harm to the prophet Elijah. Yeah. When, of course, that's not actually what the scripture says. And I went, on, you know, you can go online, in fact, if you go to BibleGateway.com, right there, there's something like 20 different translations of the Bible. The, the thing and is, I just picked a, a dozen at random, and I think all but one of them, uh, you know, uh, translated the word as children, only maybe one or two translated as youths, which yeah. you could argue might say, all right, it's not necessarily children, but, you know, it's... Well, the, the, it's possible that it may actually, even if it, even if it is a valid translation and meant uh, a gang of youths, so what? Uh, How is it just... To send bears to, to slaughter To send them? bears to kill them. Where, uh, where had they done anything other than name-calling at this point? No, they hadn't. There's nothing in there that says it, but, you look, again, in the inventive interpretations that you'll get, suddenly they're out chasing him with bats yeah. and bricks and... We're going to you know, bash your and, head in! And glocks and whatever, you know, they, yeah. <laughs> whatever they had back then. It's, a, it, it's so one it's, bit of... So you just get these tortured reinterpretations. Everything, you, have to, you have to remember, in the mind of the, uh, the believer, God's always got to win. Yeah. So, and, and if this is all about just when you get, you get down to making stuff up, you know. Yeah, if you begin with the preconception that everything uh -huh. God does is necessarily morally right, uh -huh. then you can go back and you can spin the story in such a way where either you can make it kind of maybe seem like it was morally right, or maybe you can come up with some possibilities for even though you don't completely uh -huh. understand the situation, there may have been something morally right about it. No, there wasn't. The, the story, first of all, is absurd. It never happened. But there's nothing morally right about it. There's nothing, it's like, you know, we brought up before this idea where Abraham, Abraham is asked to sacrifice his oldest son and he goes and he takes him, he binds him and does it and God intervenes at the last second in order to save the kid. Not just kidding. <laughs> and, 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 and everybody looks at this and says, wow, see how great, I mean, he, he spared this kid. Hello. He called for the kid's death in the first place. Yes, but he never intended to actually let him go it through it. It was a test. Well, what kind of moral being puts you through a test let like that? Let me tell you about tests. If I'm going to test my kid to see whether or not he'll do whatever I say, um, that's kind of stupid. But if, I, if I'm trying to test my kid to see, uh, well, there's two aspects of this. There's the test to see if you'll do whatever I say, which I would say is immoral. I don't care if it's a God doing it or not. If, yeah. God, if there is a God and he comes to me and he says, hey, guess what? I need you to kill your friend. Uh, no. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Yeah. <laughs> move on to the next yeah. sucker. But the other thing is that in order for the individual, in this case Abraham, to go along with this, he had to be of the mindset that it was in, within God's character to actually ask him to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. If he thought that God was good and would never ask for a human sacrifice, then the correct response from Abraham is, Clearly, you are not the God I worship. My God would never ask me to do anything like that. Therefore, you are a demon, and you're trying to fool me, and I refuse to fall into your trap. Ha, ha, ha. That's, that's what somebody does when they believe in a God that is good that would never ask for human sacrifice. What does Abraham do? Boom. My God is the kind of God that would ask for human sacrifice, and I believe he just did, and so I'm going to take my son up there, and I'm going to prepare, and I'm going to kill him. Be because whatever my God asks must be necessarily right, even though it would be evil otherwise. Yeah. Therefore, might makes right. You get back to this might makes right religion. But it demonstrates that the ancient, to, to some of the ancient Israelites, the, the idea that of, of God being... Uh, above human sacrifice or requesting human sacrifice is false. They had it in their, in their zeitgeist that God could and would ask for this. And that's, you, you can't have the Abraham story without that. Anyway, back to your question. Uh, yeah, nice candid shot of Muhammad right there, by the way. Right. Yeah, I forgot uh, the flying spaghetti monster today because of the lecture stuff, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, um, so another uh, question along the lines of this. I went to church with her uh, last week. And I sat through and, you know, listened with her. 
And ironically enough, the sermon was about sex, which, you know, of all the times I could have gone to church, I found it kind of ironic that was the topic. But anyway, there were some things said that obviously I disagreed with, a um, couple being that they were talking about gender roles in marriage, and they were saying, women, you must do this, men, you must do this, that. Yep. Um, and they talk about sex is all about glorifying Jesus, and you know you need to be thinking about God. While Which you're is why sex. so many and people are screaming His name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's kind of weird to me, but so uh, afterwards, uh, she asked, you know, how do you think? How did, what did you think of it? And I said, you know, it's all right, but I obviously I disagreed with some things, and I told her why I disagreed um, with the idea of gender roles and. Uh, you know, I gave her my own explanation for what I believe is correct um, in a meaningful relationship, uh, both in marriage and sexually. Mm-hmm. And I rem- recalled uh, statistics that I found uh, up to go on marriage that showed um, non-denominational Christians as having the highest divorce rate. And she's a non-denominational Christian. Um, so I... I like to give evidence for, you know, why I say the things I say and the things that I believe. So I pointed this out to her and I said, well, according to this study, uh, you are more likely to be, to get a divorce than I am or to, for any other Christian denomination for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and she did not like that at all. And now she won't talk to me about her anymore. So mm-hmm. um, and what the whole thing she said to me was that uh, I minded and judgmental about it, um, and she said, um, not things that come easily, and you, you grow in your faith, and you walk with God, you learn more about the issues over time. So my first question regarding the it was, was my criticism of a church sermon unfair because I lacked experience and knowledge about things? I, 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 mean, I, find, I, I find this accusation that you're judgmental uh, to be kind of a so what? You invited me to your church so I could listen and make a judgment about what I heard. <laughs> yeah, you asked How my could opinion. I not be judgmental? The yeah. fact that I didn't come to the same conclusion that you did um, is somehow a bad thing in your eyes. And mm. but and yet you were sitting, there, you were willing to discuss this to explain what you agreed with, what you didn't, and why. Uh, you were you were willing to offer data. One of you is being reasonable, and the other one is just trying to convert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's there's nothing at this point. Well, I, I I don't know this particular scenario. I do know that there comes a point with some people where you are just not going to make any more headway. And usually, one of the first signs is when they uh, refuse to answer or address a particular point you've made, and then want to stop talking to you, or at least you know they get mad, or they you're closed-minded, you're too judgmental. Uh, Anything yeah. along which those is, lines. Which is what they say when you just give them the answer that is not the answer they want. Yeah. Right. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times what, what Christians usually mean sometimes when they say, well, you're an atheist, well, I have a bunch of questions for you. And, and they'll start hitting you with them. They're not really looking for answers and they're not really looking for arguments. They're looking for validations and they're looking for things that they can pick at. Um, right. They're looking for and, openings. Yeah. And um, and it's amazing how quickly sort of you know the the, the standards change, or the uh, the criteria change when you give the answers that are not exactly the answers they're happy about. I've been uh, responding to um, some some guys uh, some commenters on the Atheist Experience blog just today, as a matter of fact. And recently there was uh, there's a little thing there's a little page on Lee Strobel's website, you know the the apologist, and he. Uh, where he posted, um, well, I asked several of my co-apologists and colleagues for, for questions that they wanted to ask atheists. And there are about six or seven of them, right? So I, in, in two posts, I answered them all, right, to the best of my ability. And now we're getting Christian commenters coming onto the blog saying, well, you've missed the guy's point and you haven't read all his books, so you know, you're not yeah. really qualified. And I'm like, look, they asked me, okay, these were questions that they have for atheists. All right? Now, if... If a specific apologist is going to ask a question that is loaded with what I consider to be unfounded assumptions, right? Well, I'm just, for, first off, I'm just going to answer the question that I am asked. If a Christian or an apologist or whatever asks me, X, what do you think about so and so? And what do you think about this? And what is your answer to this? I'm going to answer the question asked. You know, but the, when I give the answer, 
you know, to, to then say, oh, well, you're, you're not really qualified to answer that in the first place because you haven't read all of his 15 incredible books on theology and scholarship and what have you. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to? You can't do that. You can't go to someone and say, well, here's my question, but before you answer my question, I also want you to read all these books. You know, otherwise, you're not, you're not in a position to contradict all of the unfounded assumptions that I'm going to load my question down with. And so it's, a shame. Some, some, yeah. it's a shame that we can't really do that because yeah. I have a number of books that I'd actually want people to read. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be nice yeah. if before you got to call into the show, you had yeah. to read Enumeracy. Sure, um, yeah. You know, that would be a, that would be a good but this is just a. But I'm just talking about a specific question, uh, situation where I, as the atheist, was confronted with, here's a series of questions that apologists have for atheists. Yeah. So in that, in that context, I'm just going to answer the questions as I see them. Now, I have no objection to reading... Uh, a whole bunch of books, uh, articles and books by guys, say, like David Habermas, who think that the resurrection really happened and they think they can argue for it. If you want to recommend a book of his for me to read, that's fine. But in this discussion where you know, this particular exchange is going on, you, know, you can't very well you know, attack me suddenly for you know, contradicting Habermas or for refuting him by saying, oh, well, you haven't read all of his books. No, well, he came to me with the question. This was his question I was answering. You know? So yeah. it, it, the standards change. Suddenly, you know, the playing field suddenly becomes uneven when you really begin taking them on in a way that they don't like. So yeah, and I, I pointed all those things out to her, and I was just wondering if you guys agreed with them. You do, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, to give her credit, though, mm -hmm. uh, she, I was the one that initiated this conversation with her about religion. So, and she has told me repeatedly that she's not trying to convert me. Uh, I don't believe she is, but I do believe that she wants me to believe the same things that she believes. I mean, I, I think we all do uh, to a certain extent, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, I don't think that her purpose with me coming to church was uh, to convert me. Actually, the only, the, when she asked me to come to church with her was after I asked her to watch some of your video clips with me so that she could try to get an understanding of where I was coming from, since I have a lot of uh, agreement with what you guys say on the show. Yeah. Well, then, then that's, that's fair. And, let, and then let her call us if she's up to it. Uh, I don't We'd like she... to hear from more theists today. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think you're on the right track. Um, I think you have to be prepared for the fact that you may actually end up losing a friend over this. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately... Uh, I've lost friends um, over the fact that I'm no longer a Christian. Uh, it, it happens, and, and mm -hmm. I, I have to take comfort in the fact that uh, I didn't stop being their friend. I didn't decide that because we don't agree on something that I no longer want anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. Very well could be the case that I might have a friend who is just too... Uh, religious in a particular way that I no longer have any fun associating with them or everything that we try to do together becomes about them uh, trying to convert me back to whatever it is that their beliefs are and in that case then I, I wouldn't you know be wanting to spend time with them relationships right. end yeah. it's just a, a simple fact of life I would just say that if any Christian friend of yours decides that they want to talk to you about their religion and your atheism and, and have a meeting of minds or questions or debates just just respond to them honestly. Just always be honest in your answers to them. And, and always be honest in giving, like you were with her on your opinion of the sex sermon that you saw. Giving, just always be honest and, and open in your responses. And there's no real reason ever to feel guilty about that. And if they choose to take that, take offense to that, simply because you gave an honest answer that wasn't the answer that they wanted to hear. Sorry to say, I mean, it's hard, you know, it's, it is their problem. Yeah. And a lot of times, even when you're being incredibly polite, and I'm really good at being rude, but I know that's not a lot of people's style. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, even if you're being just very, very sweet and uh, understanding in your answer, if it is still something that they feel challenges beliefs that are deeply, deeply meaningful and personal to them, and essentially that they've built their entire life and sense of well-being and purpose upon, well, they're going to think you're being. They're going to tell you, you're rude, rude, you're judgmental, even when you are going out of your way not to do that. It's just right. the reaction that they have, because what you're doing is you're sort of chipping away at a big foundation they've built their whole identity upon. Yeah, so so think, that's, that's just a defense response. It's not anything you're doing. Right, and I think that might be a reason why she's decided to stop talking to me about this, is because sure. she's doesn't have... A She'll come crawling back. <laughs> Just give her time. Uh, 
They yeah, always well, do. like, I know, I have religious friends, too, and I, I don't really care what people believe. It's not that important mm-hmm. to me, but, you know, she's a young Earth creationist who thinks the Earth is 6,000 years old, denies evolution simply because she says it cannot be true because the Bible says otherwise, and I just, I, I don't know where to go with that, you know? I, I don't know if there's one mean. thing that I would hope to convince her, it's mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, to look at things objectively and to use reason and not just to blindly trust some book that was written thousands of years ago uh, by authors who we don't know about um, a God that may or may not exist. It just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, and I think it's just... I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to move on. This uh, we got full calls today, Tyler, which is great. Okay. Consider Super Bowl Sunday. Thanks a lot for calling in. I would yeah. say though that by the time somebody gets to the point where they are, they're flatly saying, um, "I'm going to deny this massive amount of scientific evidence," and I'm unopen to the opportunity uh, of being convinced by additional evidence because I have this preconception that this book that says X is necessarily true, and there's no evidence that could possibly be presented that would change my mind. You are wasting your time if you're yeah, going. Yeah, you're done with that person at that point. They they have to have uh, something drastic happen in their life to change their perspective. Uh, there has to be a paradigm shift in what they're willing to and analyze as evidence, what they're what they're willing to consider, and and they have to be able to eliminate those those preconceptions that they have. Quick reminders: We're going to dinner after the show. We'll be going to Threadgill's on Riverside. Uh, any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to join us down there. Also, as it says at the bottom of the screen, there will be no live show next week. Uh, that's February eighth, two thousand nine. Uh, we'll be back again the week after that. Uh, so you know, next week uh, have fun. Heck, go to that's, church. Yeah. Why not? Take the kids. But uh, we've got. Is it Alonzo? Yes. How you doing, Alonzo? Hanging in there. Hanging Good in there. deal. Are What's you up? Are you preparing for the Super Bowl? Oh, well, uh, well, no, uh, since Cowboys didn't make it, I'm not really interested. Okay. So, yeah. so what do you want to talk about? Well, I was going to ask you, uh, have, uh, once in your lifetime, were you uh, ever involved in, uh, in church or a Christian once? Yes. Maybe when, a long time ago or something? Yeah. When you were younger? Yeah. Oh, you were? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, what happened, I mean, what happened? Uh, well, uh, in my case, here the short version is, um, I was studying with the intent of becoming a minister and fulfilling uh-huh. my obligation under 1 Peter 3.15, and so I decided that I was going to come up with uh, and analyze the, the arguments uh, for and against the existence of God to, be, to have yeah. answers ready to be able to convince people that, you know, w- what I believed was true and lead right. them to, to Jesus. Well, um, and what I found was that my beliefs were not supported by evidence or reason, uh, that despite uh, any attempts to uh, seek a God or pray or get an answer or guidance, uh, yeah. none of that happened. And then I found that there was massive amounts of evidence uh, that contradicted things that I believed, and I decided I cared whether or not what my beliefs were true. And as soon as I did that, then I had to come up with a way to analyze whether or not my belief was true right. or not yet proven to be true. And cool. anything that was not yet proven to be true was rejected. Well, you know, uh, I'm not I in church, or I've never really been in church, maybe like a, a handful of times, right? And mm-hmm. I don't really read the Bible, you know, but I do believe in God. Uh, and, well, for one, in Revelation, it's happening. It's coming true, you know? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, no, well, we true. don't know what you mean. Yeah. Well, first of all, do you have so, a reason? Do you have a reason why you believe there's a God? If we just read the newspaper, turn on the TV, from Austin across the world, <laughs> everything is happening negative, and it's not going to get better. Do you think this world's going to get better? Um, first of Honestly. all, well, there there's so many ways to look at that. I mean, you you, you can go through any point in history. Before you know, before the Christian religion was around, before the Bible was around, you can look at periods of great strife, and you can look at periods of, uh, you know, a great flowering of uh, okay. of, of growth right. in, in so, the human race. We go through right. we go through periods that are good and periods of the, uh-huh. that are bad. So We're in a really bad period right now. To me, that would seem to argue against the idea of a, a God watching over us and looking after us. But I know a lot of people yeah. have other different views on that. Right. To me, I don't think that you can find. You can conclude anything how, just based how about, upon... Right. Go ahead. How about the market of beast? 
uh, the Antichrist. Yeah, we've heard uh, yeah. the guy who's going to change the world, which yeah. is people say it's Obama. You know. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's okay. Okay. Stop. Stop. Yeah. First of all. Yeah. Give me, I mean, I have a Bible right here, actually. Uh, I've got an open Revelation. Give me something in Revelation that... I've never really read Revelation. Then how the I hell mean, can you possibly yeah. say what? that the things in Revelation are coming true? Yeah. It, did you what's just, not did coming you true. Did, you but what's can't, not coming true? If you haven't read it, yeah. and you don't know, what, what are you doing? You're just listening to somebody what, else yeah, who it, tells you what it I says? I mean, what's not coming true, though? Well, what, what, are you claiming, what are you claiming is coming true? What are you claiming that Revelation what's says? What's not purple? Yeah, I mean, what are you claiming so, that Revelation you're says? You're claiming that something is purple, and then you, when, when I say true, what, happening, everything. Could, what, hey. what, 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 everything? What, how can you know I what mean, the everything is that's supposed to be happening if you, if you haven't I mean, read the if you haven't read the, 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 haven't read the passage? I don't know. How about Revelation right. one one? You want to start from there? Oh wait, you've never it's read it. No, I don't. Know. I haven't read it, but uh, I mean, you know, uh, people read it. Tell me, you know. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, like so basically, you believe what people tell you. No, because it, it, it's true. You can you can feel it. You, you know, the devil's strong. The devil, uh, he keeps you awake. Like the uh, devil doesn't wants you to be keep me awake. The devil wants you to be an atheist, so you can forget about God, and then and then pretty soon the government's gonna you know ban out. You know, like how they do it now, slowly, and just like Alex Jones is saying, all oh, this is you know like with the terrorist and and. and Bush 9/11. This is revelation. How many how, how many code words can you get into your response without actually saying a damn thing? Yeah, I mean, what do you what Bush 9/11 terrorist devils? You're basically trying to say bad stuff is happening, so yeah. that means that Bible prophecies are true, even though I cannot refer to a specific Bible prophecy that these that refer to these bad things because I haven't read them. I mean, I you you and by the way, you have no e basis for any of the could, stuff you're claiming. Even if you could. The fact that you can match something up with a book doesn't mean that everything right. else in the book's going to so It doesn't mean that the book predicted it because right. people have been predicting end times and saying we're living in the so, end times since the beginning yeah. times. Yeah. So I guess you don't believe in good and evil, right? What, how did you get to that? Yeah, that's a complete non sequitur. Yeah, you you, got, you are you making faith, you are making you claims and you got the creator. You are making claims that the Bible down, down says that creator. the Bible has predicted that certain events that are occurring now yeah. will be occurring, and that is somehow proof of the Bible. And then when we ask you, well, what specific thing in Revelation are you talking about? You said, I haven't read it. So why should we take anything that you have to say on this subject seriously at all? You are just pulling this stuff because out of no, your hat. You, you know don't know what you're about. talking about. I mean, you don't have any you know frame of reference for what you're saying. And frankly, you're just making a fool, fool of yourself I'm at not this making, point. This is true. This is, so what, uh, all that I'm saying is not happening from, from the government uh, the government because dot dot the, dot. The the big evil government has done what this week that is specifically referred to in the Bible. Name a thing. Man, Name bro. a thing. How, how okay. did you get? How Name did thing? you get to this idea about good and evil? I mean, I, yeah. I realize so, that I, I realize that you're not actually forming okay. syllogisms, but you I would like to get from A to B, and I'd like demons. to finish a damn sentence before you start answering I me. <laughs> can I do that? Is, is there a point to anything? Now you can. Now you can explain. Go ahead. Man, I mean, I mean, there is such thing as demons. Okay, uh, How do you let's know? get to evil. I mean, let's get to evil because there's no matter. This world is wicked, and this world is evil. You just said there is right? such a thing as demons, and I, how do you know? Wicked evilness. Uh, where does it come from? Where does it come from? From from uh, evil. Evil. From? Evil is, is a it? label that we put on actions, and people take actions, and they can be good or evil. What? 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 Where do you get to demons from? Yeah. Man, you know what? I really honestly really wish uh, that there was no Satan or devil, you know? Well, really congratulations. All well, the evidence seems to point to the fact that there isn't. You're in luck, Alonzo. Alonzo, here's what we are trying to get to tell you, and I think we should move on. Here's what we are trying to tell you, Alonzo. When you want to argue something, when you want to take a position on something and you want to convince somebody, let's say you have an opinion, okay? Not You've got an opinion true, on this. You true. have... Okay, you have an opinion now, on this? Alonzo, Alonzo, listen yeah, to me. Right, listen, right. what we're trying to get you to do, okay, is before you try to present your opinion to somebody else as a question or a challenge and this, say, yeah. this says this, mm -hmm. you've got to think it through. You've got to do two things. First off, you've got to actually study what it is that you think supports your position. You've got to actually come up with a position. You actually have to be able to say, 
here are things that I think the Bible has predicted accurately. Here are the references in the Bible that point to this. Now, what do you have to say about that? You haven't done any of this. You are just talking off the top of your head. So this is where you're running into a problem here. You're not making sense because you haven't even thought through what it is you think you believe. So, and just, okay. just a second so, ago, so you that need to, you need to study out. what it is right. you think you believe yeah. first okay. before you begin so to try to challenge other people with it. And you haven't even done the basics yet. And, and just a second ago, you said five uh, years from now, the world is going to be changed. Okay, so... Could you personally world, be more vague? It's, diff, it's changed from the way it was okay, five years ago. so uh, I guess you're saying that, that this planet has been created by science, by... Oh, Lord. However, it has been proven. This Man, I'm getting, I need Advil at this point. Right? So, so the world is made up by, by science. We got water. We got trees. We got grass. We got air. We got trees. Goodbye. <laughs> I was just waiting was, for you to say, look at the trees. I was, one, God, I was wondering when it was going to, yeah. Look, the fireworks calls, those are great fun. But I know another book you've never read. A science book. <laughs> I, I, I know another book he's never read, which is a book at all of any kind, probably. I, I, you know, it doesn't I, have a... No, you know, hang like, on, hang because it's, it's not we don't wanna, Yeah, we don't want to pound on the guy. Now that I've hung on up air. on the guy, it would be unfair you're right, for me you're to right. beat up on Alonzo. You're right. I'll say this, though. Uh, the, the question, even as I bet poorly, the chat room is on fire right now. Jen's over there grinning. Uh, the, question, the, the question, even as poorly as it was phrased, um, addresses... <laughs> How do you think, for example, the earth formed, or life formed, or life progressed? And even if the answer was, I don't have a clue, even if we didn't have a scientific explanation, the explanation that you believe that there's a magic man who done it all does not become more plausible. You have to actually provide evidence for that. It's not the default position. It's, it's, it's not a position. It doesn't answer anything. It has no explanatory power. It's a non-answer. Yeah. So when you ask something like, I think you just think science did it. No, science isn't a person. It's not a thing. It's not a, it's not a do. Mm -hmm. It couldn't possibly do anything. Science yeah. is the label that we put on a process. The process by which we exercise reason, evidence, and testing in order to determine the nature of the reality in which we exist. And it is the single most reliable, consistently reliable method for discerning fact from fiction that we've ever discovered and, and potentially could ever discover. As a matter of fact, if you had a new method that you thought would be better, you'd have to use science to prove that the new method was better. Right, but before you even get there, right, before you even get to just this understanding of science and the scientific method and how it works and how we establish facts about the world, um, our caller's problem was that I think he had, in a very general sense, just poor thinking skills to begin with. And this, I think, is whether it's a failure of his education or upbringing that we have, and I'm not seeing her beating up on the guy when he's not there to defend himself. This is a problem that I see so often in talking to believers in the first place. There's a certain kind of believer who will just start throwing stuff out. Yeah. They, they can't form a coherent thought. They haven't even thought about it in the first place. They haven't established, okay, here's my premise. Look at all the stuff that's happening. Oh, yeah. you don't believe in good and evil. Oh, oh. you think all this came... In. But, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. way do I dodge? You know, which... Right. He, you know, okay, you first, he hasn't really learned how to form ideas. He hasn't learned how it is that he even understands or can understand the things that he thinks he believes. I mean, he was being contradictory all over the place from the get-go. Well, I'm not really sure I believe in God, and I don't go to church or anything, but look at all this stuff that the Bible says is happening is true. Well, well what is happening? Oh, well, it's everything that's happening right now. You know, this, it was just a big, big salad. Of, it was a huge mess, and this is what you conf confront many, many times when you're talking with people who have this fundamentalist mi mindset, is basic thinking skills aren't developed. You've got to kind of start there before you decide you want to challenge people present your opinions, if you, if you haven't even got an opinion to present or know how to present it. Jeez. Yeah. One of the sorry. seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. Muhammad's comforting with, me. with her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with wine of, their, of, the, of her adulterers. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that, would co that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. When you get a picture of it, call back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you know, 
Go read the book. I mean, you, do you, you do? Well, actually, I was going to say you do know, but we have obviously really you don't know. The, the, who I'm the, sure are uh, very yeah, hang on. intelligent. I know. Hang on. I know. You do know is what I was going to say, but you actually don't. Revelation almost didn't even get into the Bible because when it came time to vote on which book should be in there, some of the guys said, um, "Hello, this sounds like the ravings of a lunatic." Yeah, that's right. It's, it was what two hundred years worth of ecclesiastical debates and editing before we ended up getting to the New Testament canon we have now. Yeah. It wasn't until nearly the year four hundred. Uh, 325. 325? Okay, I thought it was Nicely. 390. Nice, it was Whatever. 325. But anyway. All right. So we've got Christer, Christopher in Bloomington, Indiana. Thank you for waiting. Yeah. Thanks for waiting. Hey, what's up? Um, <laughs> you, I have like two quick questions. Don't worry, they're really quick. But I wanted to make a note real quick. Uh, I, I wonder if you guys heard about this too. The guy who wrote the book of Revelations was named John of Patmos, and the island of Patmos is known for mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, except uh. that it's... We don't know for sure that it was John of Patmos that wrote it, but I mean that is one possible. Theory. Let's just say the shrooms thing would not surprise us. You wouldn't wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't shock me that much. Yeah, because like if you, if you if you kind of think of it with that in mind when you go back and read it, it's like oh my gosh, this guy was tripping. Yeah, yeah. well but, also there's a, you know he could have just been nuts. Um, yeah, you know John, uh, Revelation could have been written by several sources, uh, and I think it is the thinking of a great many biblical scholars that the writer of Revelation, or writers, or whoever here they were, whether they were nuts or not, were writing about current events, more or less, in this sort of vague, strange, symbol-heavy commentary. Um, you know, I've been told that it's the thinking that the 666, the, the Antichrist, was uh, specifically referring to Vespasian, I believe? The Emperor Caesar. Vespasian. No, I think it was Nero. I've heard Nero. I've heard, I've, I've heard, I've heard all of them. I've heard Nero and Vespasian. But the long and short of it is that this is some sort of bizarre, symbol-laden, current events commentary that was going on there. And, the uh, problem with interpreting m m weird symbols and weird, vague passages is, yeah. guess what? They can say whatever you, <laughs> whatever want, you want them to want say, them to whenever say. you want yeah. them to say it. Yeah. But what did, what did you call on besides that, Christopher? Yeah, uh, okay. So uh, I, you kind of like touched on this earlier, but uh, you know how people uh, like to say, well, I mean, I've heard people say, well, since God is God, he created you, he has the right to do whatever he wants to do. And if he wants to send you to an agonizing eternity in hell, he has that right because, like, I created you, like, I, took, I brought you in this world, I can take you out. Mm -hmm. and, like, so he's you, evil. You, so he's evil. Huh? He's an evil tyrant, you're saying. So he, that's, that's you, the response. He's an evil tyrant. Oh, that, that, that works perfectly. And it, yeah. when you think of it that way, it... Just, it, it, it like you really have to think, okay, then why why does God have that? Like why is because uh, the God in the of the Bible is very anthropomorphic. Why does God have these traits? Why does He uh, do the things He does? But um, the second thing I was going to ask you is, do you think that there are any real Christians left? Because I've come to the conclusion that I don't think there really are any real Christians left. Because if there were any real Christians, you would see them like on the side of the road being homeless. Because like it's supposed it, to give it, up everything. It depends on how you define real Christian, and I, I don't get to define it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm. They each get to define it, so every one of them is going to define it in a way where they're a real Christian. So yeah, there's millions of them. Yeah. It's, they've it's, all defined their own mm, real Christian. Yeah. You might. It's it's kind of like saying, well, who's a real, true Star Trek fan, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. if you if you if you like the original series best, or are you a next gen for? Oh well, the you know the next gen people, they're not the true Star Trek fans. Damn it. You know, what's it matter, really? Uh, uh, religion is all about, and belief in God is all about people projecting an idealized self-image upon the universe in order to make the universe less lonely and less big and less scary and less remote and to make it feel like you've got a purpose in life. And so, yeah, God is whatever you want him to be because essentially he is your self-image. Idealized, made a little more perfect. He doesn't have all the little problems that you may have. He may, may not. He may be a Wait, little are bit. Are you saying quicker. I have no self-image? You have no self-image, man. I hate oh to break it to you. Yeah. So, it's, no, you're just very sensible about your self-image. It, well, here, take no. Well, well, thank you so, for uh, answering yeah, your question. But that's uh, that's kind of the yeah. True Christians are whatever they say they are. Yeah, well, thank you yeah. for answering my questions, and I uh, keep up the good work. Thanks for holding. Thanks for having me. Oh, by the way, I'd say, Matt, you're my favorite, because uh, I don't know if I can say this, but you kick butt. Oh, you, you can say kick butt. You can even say ass no, if you I, wanted to. Yeah, I was, about to, I was raising it because I didn't want to say ass. ass. Wow. We well, appreciate Thanks. that concession. I appreciate that. Sensitivity over asses. Yes. Evidently, I, I kick ass. Oh, wow. 
I'm going to kick some cow ass here in a minute. Now, this is Moo, and he's here to calm you and oh, comfort you in your yes. moments of strife dealing By the way, for, the, for those just kind of, of uh, who don't remember, there was this incident ages and ages ago where a teacher allowed her students to name the teddy bear in the classroom Muhammad, yes. and people went nuts and called for her death. And so this I happened first, in Africa and in the Muslim I, I first Muslim. named my coffee cup Muhammad, but it cracked and broke. Uh, clearly a sign. Mm. And then uh, one of the friends of the show bought this cow and we named him Muhammad. Uh, so there you He's go. our cow, I tell you. He's our sacred cow. He is the cow of cows. Yeah. But I didn't bring the flying spaghetti monster today because I was busy packing stuff up for the lecture and forgot it. Oh. Well, hey, blah, blah, blah. enjoy my chin. <laughs> So, all right. All right. Do we have so, we got, is it Sarah in Pullman, Washington? Uh, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Thanks for holding so long. Oh, it's fine. Hey. What's up, Sarah? Um, well, I have a creationist roommate, and I've had her for a semester now. And, mm. But my, my real thing is uh, more about feminist views than the science, because I realized I could never teach her that she's sort of too far gone for that. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. And she didn't think that, you know, the first feminist movement was good. And I basically told her that we were treated as property. Women were. And she said, you know, I don't think so. And I was wondering, you know, how to respond to that. It's like, well, I'd love not to think so, but it doesn't change the uh, fact. Oh, 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 we've lost the audio again. That's okay. Well, we can, we can answer, yeah. Sarah, up to this point. Yeah, we'll hang on, Sarah, if you can, and, and we'll address it. Go. Well, well um, okay. aren't there many, many uh, passages in the Bible in which you, we essentially see Oh, yeah, women there's women obey your as, husband and be subservient to him as, as yeah. he's subservient before Christ, and, you know, submit to the yeah. church, etc. Um, yeah, there's Paul saying that he doesn't permit a woman to, to be yeah. in charge over a man or speak in church, that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's various ways to interpret it. But the key factor is that um, yeah, women could there's, there's nothing in the Bible or Christianity or... I guess some of the other religions, but if, just focusing on Christianity in particular, there's nothing in there that talks about equality. There's nothing in there that even implies equality. Lower guys so that we can... Yeah, and, and in fact, everything about it, um, deal, it implies an inequality. Um, and if you listen to people, actually, um, Beth sent me a link the other day of Kent Hovind in one of his lectures talking about the fall and Adam and Eve in, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and eating the fruit. And Kent Hovind's take on this has got to be one of the most offensive, sexist things I've ever heard. So if you have a young earth creationist who's a fan of things like Hovind, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a clip that they can actually watch where he says that Eve was duped by the snake. Um, she was conned into being uh, uh, into sinning because she was just that dumb but Adam willingly sinned as a sort of self-sacrifice to join his his betray or his his hopelessly uh, uh, depraved wife in her sin that this was a self-sacrificing effect that that mirrored the effect uh, uh, mirrored the actions of Jesus sacrificing himself for everybody. makes him even dumber yeah and 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 he, yes but I'd say even if Hovind's interpretation is incredibly sexist, uh, but also I'd say that it would be, yeah, it would make Adam even dumber. It would be, um, hey, uh, God, you made this woman for me, and uh, this one ain't working out. She wouldn't listen to you at all. She went and ate this you know, fruit. Yeah. Uh, let's get rid of her and, and make a new one. I mean, that's what <laughs> the righteous man does in that scenario. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh... I, it, you, you can just look at uh, the way in which, well, for example, marriage of uh, hundreds and hundreds of years was, was all about, uh, you know, what did you do with your daughter since they were more or less useless and they couldn't run things? Well, you married them off so that you could form bonds between, say, one powerful family and another powerful family. You know, they were sort of... 53 shekels and a goat. Yeah, that, I mean, no, you know, that, that's what marriage always was. They were like, uh, they were prearranged sort of business and political arrangements between powerful families, and it really wasn't about love and romance, and it really wasn't certainly about uh, you know, what the girl wanted, because what she wanted didn't really mean anything. Yeah. It, was, it was kind of irrelevant. That and the idea um, that if, if, if you wanted a wife, one of the best loopholes in the Bible was to go out and find a woman that you found attractive and rape her. Uh, because if you did, then she'd be required to marry you. Woo! Yeah, I'd have to do is pay Dad 50 shekels. Oh, Sarah's back. Hi. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi. Okay. Uh, I hope um, you heard most of that while we were talking about Yeah, we actually her. heard all of it. Okay. But I was also, part of it is that she doesn't, I think, know the history of, like, the feminist movement and stuff. 
And so I try to tell her that, yeah, we were just property and that, you know, that's how marriage was, is just getting rid of the female, Mm -hmm. um, essentially. And she says, you know, I just don't think so. And is there any response to that at all or... Well, here's the thing. I mean, you can just, you can tell her, you, you know, it's the whole lead a horse to water thing, right? But it's up to her at a certain point. You can say, there is history, there, there are accounts, there is, there's all sorts of literature uh, that you can read and, and bone up on these subjects, and, and you can take courses, you can, I mean, you can, you can choose to educate yourself on these things that you'd rather deny or not. But at a certain point, the uh, choice has to be hers. And if she does the whole, you know, monkey, she, you know, thing, uh, then... If that's the choice she makes, then there probably isn't a whole lot that you can do. I mean, you know, it, 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 she has to make that, uh, sort of the choice to want to learn this stuff on her own. And if her preconceptions are, are things that she needs to protect too desperately at this point to sort of keep herself in an emotionally safe spot, uh, then that's kind of where she is right now. She doesn't want to get out of her comfort zone. She doesn't want to get out of it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, of talking to some of the conspiracy theorists where they say, you know, uh, um, well, here's what I believe and why. And then if you offer uh, evidence or point out flaws in the theory or anything else, um, the answer isn't, isn't, and I'm generalizing a bit here, the answer is, ob is, is often the same. It's, oh, well, I just don't believe that. I can't, you're a fool for believing that. You believe what the government told you? How stupid are you? Yeah. Uh, that type of thing. That, you, they're too far gone. They I, got I to you too, no, did they? No answer and no approach. If, you're, if, you're, if your response is, um, I don't believe the evidence that you've presented, and therefore I'm not changing my mind, um, then I guess the only thing you could ask, okay, is, is there any evidence that I could present that would convince you? If their answer is no, then you're done wasting time. If their answer is yes, now maybe you've got an avenue where you can figure out what evidence mm -hmm. uh, you, you might want to come up with. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's all. Hey, thank you, sir, thanks, sir. for calling. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's yeah. one of the most common questions that we should probably ask across the board is, all right, if you're unwilling to change your mind because of what I've already said or what you've already read or whatever, what would it take to make you change yeah. your mind? We well, have to remember that um, there, there is the emotional tie that... Um, religious fundamentalists and certain people who, let's say if you want to talk about the conspiracy theorists, people who adopt a patently irrational belief usually do so for emotional reasons and not rational ones, duh, because if it's an irrational belief. And if holding on to that belief is something that they think protects them emotionally, is giving them you know, comfort in confronting things about life that they don't really understand or is helping to sort of validate or reinforce ideas that they want to be true because they find other things about life either scary or whatnot, then the emotional defense mechanism is something that is very difficult to hack your way through. If, again, if the whole creation evolution debate were simply about well, what does the scientific evidence say? Let's look at it objectively and with open minds, both sides. Hmm. All right. Evolution wins, right? It would be that simple. The fact that it is this protracted fight uh, between, you know, for, you know, on the part of the pro-science side to kind of keep these patently religious mythical ideas out of science classes where they don't belong is because it's the emotional tie that people who believe in creationism have to wanting to, the, the desire to believe that there is this all-loving, purposeful God who's watching over me and he's going to send me to heaven and I'm safe, I'm sound, I don't have to be scared of anything, I don't have to be scared of death, I don't have to be scared of the universe or the world because there's all a plan and if evolution, no, if that's true, then that takes all that away and then that's, now I'm really scary and I, I'm really scared and I'm really upset and I feel like I have no direction, da 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 So that's what that's all about. So that can be the hard thing to cut through. We ready? Yeah, we got, cool. is it Lynn? Yes. How are you, Lynn? Okay, I can barely hear you. We have a we have a poor connection or something. Oh, okay. well, well, anyway, I don't I don't um, consider myself a Christian anymore, but I but I uh, I'm not an atheist either. But anyway, uh, you were you wanted somebody to you know to try to refute something. Uh, you were saying that there was nothing about equality in in the Bible that. Um, there is nothing in the Bible that supports belief in equality. Uh, yeah. so, well, some scriptural scholars have said that, uh, well, that, that uh, Paul was not the sexist pig that he was, that he's cracked up to be, 
that this was clear back, oh, like in the 50s, before uh, equality was an issue. Some, some scholars said that, that certain passages were put into Paul's letters by later church authorities to bolster their, their beliefs. Yeah, do, um, do, we have, do we have any evidence of this? Do we have early copies? And by the way, Paul isn't the only one with sexist ideas in the Bible. So, I mean, even if Paul's stuff was modified, that doesn't change the, the earlier passages. It doesn't change Old Testament stuff. It doesn't change uh, other passages about inequality. Okay, but I was just I was just saying that mm -hmm. that um, uh, some of them say that Paul himself uh, did not believe in well inequality or female subordination. That Paul um, himself actually uh, um, said things like in in Christ there is neither male nor female, nor neither Jew nor Greek, uh, a slave nor free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I. I we don't know to what degree, really, although who knows? I mean, maybe there are scholars out there who have some pretty good ideas to what degree certain passages and books in the Bible and the New Testament were radically edited by you know, ecclesiastical sources. To, but, but whether they were or not, whatever has ended up in the canon, I think, is ultimately what we are meant to believe is the inherent divinely inspired word of God. So... Uh, it sounds to me like what you have there is when you, say, when you have apologists say things like, oh, well, Paul didn't really mean that. That sounds like a very, very common answer that you get when you confront an apologist with something in the Bible that's a little bit embarrassing by modern moral standards, and they have to sort of go, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I know that doesn't really sound so good, but what he meant to say was, you know how it is. So Now, I do kind of take your point that since the Bible and, and the books that were written, they were the products of people living in a primitive culture, uh, thousands of years ago, and so in such a culture, if the idea of gender equality that we take for granted today in the 21st century wasn't even something that they thought of back then, well then, you know, is, can you really say that's sexist for them? Because to the, for them it may have been perfectly normal to say, well, yeah, men are better than women and they have deserved more of these rights and privileges mm -hmm. and women have a certain role that they fill and that's just, if gender equality was not even something that occurred to them, in the way that it occurred, uh, you know, starting with the modern feminist movement, then can you really say that that's sexist? Yes. Well, well you can by our standards, because our standards are the ones we go by. So okay. So in that regard, it doesn't really matter. To, it's not really a good defense to say, oh, well, back then they did it that way, because, well, 200 years ago we had slaves in America, so can you say that that was racist today? Yes, we can. Yeah. Because now we're more enlightened. Yeah. Okay, but, but like... Um, uh, <laughs> Oh gosh, you said so much. It's hard to to Sorry. answer it all. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is, if if the script, if there's anything to the idea that some scriptures had, even back in what you might call pre-feminist days of the fifties, that that Paul didn't actually say those things. Somebody else added them later, and and then you 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 uh, consider things like in Christ uh, there is neither male nor female. There are, in other words, there's a, a, a uh, there's evidence or or a hint, let's say, that possibly um, Christianity was radically egalitarian for its time, uh, based on what you say about the mindset of those days. Uh, it, it it certainly would seem to be possible if you actually had any evidence that these changes took place. Unfortunately. We don't, and we also know that um, it clearly didn't have any effect like that. Even, even if you assume, even if you only look at the time period between the original authorship and when it was supposedly changed, there wasn't this radical feminist equality movement during that time period that later got uh, sh sh stopped because a change. We don't have any evidence from anywhere for this. Well, um, there might have been a quiet one, a quiet taken for granted one, uh, among the the Christians themselves, the small 
Christian communities. We sure. don't know that either. Sure, and good for them. I'm sure there are plenty of people throughout history who might have had good ideas and might have treated people more equally. The thing is, from a theological perspective, it doesn't make any sense. Just like it doesn't make any sense to now go back and say that when the Bible talks about having slaves and keeping slaves and how much to sell slaves for and driving an all through their ear on the door to mark them as your property forever, that it wasn't really talking about slavery in the way we know it. I mean, that's just mm. absurd. No, I mm. didn't mean to... I, I, I understand that. I understand that. But when we're talking about a cohesive pack, package, um, so it wouldn't matter to me if, for example, the Bible was only four sentences long and it basically said, love everybody, treat everybody as equal, mm -hmm. don't harm anybody. Else. Those are fine, but mm -hmm. it doesn't tell me anything at all about whether or not there's a God. And by the way, it doesn't need to be, it's no information that needed to be revealed by a God. If there was a God, and I know you're not arguing for the existence of God, you're arguing for you know, the, the possible changes to Paul, that Paul might have been uh, you know, wonderful instead of this uh, sexist pig that we now view. <laughs> right. and, and my response is, I, have, I see, see no evidence that that's the case. You've got, you've got a guy, I mean, and, and if we can go through and just say in the New Testament that, that uh, well, this has been edited to make Paul look worse, well, then the rest of it might have been edited to make Jesus look better. Although, frankly, I don't think he looks that good. So Interesting. Well, I, it wasn't, I'm not saying it was deliberately edited to make Paul look worse. It was deliberately edited to uh, sure. advance those sexist viewpoints that the later church authorities had and took for granted. Yeah, and if we had any evidence of a conspiracy like that to make those changes to exert power, then there might be a point. But until we do, it's kind of just speculation and and really in the broader sense it ends up being kind of pointless because uh, it doesn't matter what it originally said first of all because we don't know what it originally said but uh, what only the only thing that matters is uh, truth w the e equality the, the idea of treating each each other as um, equals um, is as far as I'm concerned a prevailing good truth and it doesn't matter whether a book said do it or don't do it um, or, or whether it was changed afterwards. Oh, I was just called up because you asked for somebody to refute something in the last few minutes. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> so I was trying to refute the idea that, um, that, that you uh, set forth that, that, uh, there was, that there was nothing supporting belief in, in equality okay. in, the, in the Bible. And, and uh, uh, one thing that was not tampered with as far as I know, but was at least it was allowed to remain in the Bible is the idea that in Christ there is neither... I, I, I understand, and, and I will retract my statement that there is no, no statements about equality in the Bible, and I'll amend it as follows. There aren't any statements about equality in the Bible that are clear and uncontradicted by other passages in the Bible. There is no universal clear sentiment of equality, especially among the gender, in the Bible. I get you. Well, that I'll certainly go along with. That, okay, thanks, I'll get Lynn. back quick. Maybe I can hear myself on TV. Okay, thanks. thanks Bye -bye. Lynn. Thank you, Lynn, for calling. Wow. We're out of time, and I apologize oh. to the callers that are, are waiting. We have literally 30 seconds left in the show. There's a crew that I'm sure they'll show. The, there they are. Wave, hey. guys. We will um, not be back next week. We'll be back again in two weeks. You can, join us, down at Thread, you can join us down at Thread Gills. Uh, after the show's over on Riverside Drive. And if you're hanging on, just keep hanging on, and we'll talk to you when say, the show's over. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I say stay on the phone if you're hanging. We'll talk to you. Oh, no, no, not you. Uh, go ahead. Martin, hit the buttons. I, I'm going to be AFK to say. Okay, let me see. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. What? Huh? Jesus. Oh, hell. Please. Wires, 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 and you're still caught up in your wires. There you go. Do you want to come on and talk to these guys? Uh, sure. All right. Okay. I just thought you might be coming up here. I, for I just wanted to say about that last caller, I was thinking about it, and... Um, she, it, it's irrelevant whether that stuff was in the Bible earlier or later. It's in there now. Oh, yeah, and gonna... if, it, if she's just saying that you shouldn't listen to it because it used to not be in there, she guesses, mm. then 
she, all she's really indicating is that the Bible is completely unreliable. So what yeah, are we she's not exactly doing anyway. the Bible any favors with that kind of. Well, she wasn't trying to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know. Well, your point back. Back. Yeah. She wasn't trying to refute the Bible at all. She was trying to just give my statement, which was actually wrong. There are passages that you could interpret um, as talking about equality. Unfortunately, uh, they're not really clear, and they're not. They're also contradicted. Also, say hi to George. Yeah. Hey, George. Hi, Matt. Hi, Martin. Ow. Shit, that's Whoa, loud. volume down. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for holding. We're, we're happy to talk to you on the Internet anyway. What's up? Oh, well. Hey, I was just thinking, um, you know, the, regarding what uh, Lynn just said, promises of spiritual unity and now or in the world to come do not contradict all the other decidedly patriarchal stuff that is clearly unmistakably in the Bible. Well, I'd say it does contradict it. It just doesn't over, it does, overrule it. It doesn't overrule it. Also, if anyone is curious, especially the, the first caller who brought it up, I would recommend that she consult any of the written and indeed venerated works of the various central figures of Christian history, going from Paul to Augustine to Aquinas all the way to Martin Luther and beyond, where they clearly indicate male supremacy. There's just absolutely no question about it. And this corpus of work makes up most of what we call the fathers and institutions of the church. Yep. It's not like this is a gray area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, that's, awesome that's true. And I think, that, though, as Matt said, I think her only real point was maybe made me to take on... You know, she the, proved me wrong yeah. in, in a limited sense, and I'll admit it in a limited sense. Yeah. And, and, and even though the Bible does say, okay, in Jesus there is no male or female, that does not, all that uh, can be taken to mean is that salvation is equally open to everyone, but right. that still it, does it, not imply that there is uh, it, rampant... It's the, gen- it's the yeah. universalization of the previous covenant with a single historical group of people. In the same verse, I believe, it also says, there shall be no, no Jew or Greek among you. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean that there's no such thing as a Jewish or a Greek person. It simply yeah. meant that the yeah. old deal is off, and this is the new deal. Yeah, and it yeah. doesn't mean that there is isn't still rampant social and gender inequality in the actual culture that's right, existing right. at the time, too. So it just means, yeah, Jesus will save you anyway if you're a yeah. Yeah. You know, poor, blighted to, Greek or female or whatever the hell you are. I did want to throw something out to the, to the fellow who called earlier who had the, the, the female acquaintance who was a churchgoer and he was trying to get through to her and make her see, it, perhaps look at it a little more skeptically. My trick is, and this doesn't require people to bury themselves in, in, in religious literature and whatnot, you ask them this. You say, can you prove to me, or say, say, okay, you have a religion, but you know there are other religions and you don't believe in them. Why do you not believe in them? And here's the twist. You cannot simply say, well, because I have a religion that says something else. You can't say I know they're wrong because I'm right. You, without reaching into the Bible, show me from evidence in the world that you're correct. And if they can't do that, then they have to admit that they're falling back on nothing but faith. You know, it's the old, you can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. Thing. Yeah, but unfortunately. That is what they'll do. That, unfortunately, most of those guys are going to be fine with falling back on faith in the end. Yeah. They're, and and they, will, they will do the thing of, you know, they'll give you the whole look at the tree spiel, as usual, and they'll just say, well, you know, I, I am satisfied by my own standards, by my own terms of what, I, you know. I that, believe it because I believe it because I believe yeah, it. Yeah. It'll it'll eventually sort of get into that you know sophistry and yeah it'll fall back on faith and you're right they're fine with that. They, but isn't looking at the trees an argument for druidism? Uh, well, yeah, hit them with that. I'd love to see what they say in response to that one too. Yeah. Um, Could be a case. Yeah. And, okay, one last thing though. Yeah. Seriously, if you're going to put Muhammad on your shoulder, you need another evil Muhammad to balance him out. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, apparently, we're told we Shelly, have one. Shelly's Shelly's ready to bring him next week. Okay, we have. You have an evil Muhammad. Evidently, that's what we're being told. I, yes. I will believe it next week if I see it. I, well, it can't be uh, next week. Weeks. We, week two after weeks. Yeah, <laughs> two weeks from now we will have uh, Muhammad's evil twin. Wait, I don't know, Spike. Wait, is this the evil one? Mm. I mean, how do we know? Given what Matt was talking about earlier about knowing uh, what's by right the right color, right. just like you know, the red one's going to be the evil one, just like the guy in the black hat's the bad guy. I mean, come yeah. on, George. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Well, you don't well, need hey, to listen. I was originally a Catholic, so we take a much more broad interpretation of these things. Oh, oh okay. yeah, because the Catholics end up being the ones in the black hats. Oh, and the bishops have the, you know, those the red, uh, yeah, the mitre, and white mitre hat. That they yeah, wear, but, so, yeah, but hang on, we can we can make our peace with evolution officially. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. took a few centuries. And, but, until you, you know. change popes. 
Yeah. Well, he's not getting well, this way. The Holy She's cock blocking the new pope. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, that, that, that Alonzo call was hysterical. Great show. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was our, our moment of fireworks. We got it in. I, w I right. want to try and get through these last two people on hold before I head off to watch or, or ignore a Super Bowl. So we'll talk to you later. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, you're kind of on the air. You're on the Internet. Who are we talking to? Hi, you there? Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah. Okay, someone's there, but the volume's very low. Hang on. Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, you're on. We're, yeah. Oh, I am on. Yeah, right. how you doing? Well, um, uh, yeah, you've been hearing about the, uh, uh, the State Board of Education thing, right? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I'm actually in school, and I've, you know, I've seen the whole strengths and weaknesses of evolution thing. I don't think it's that big. I just think uh, it, it's just like uh, they're tr they're just, well, I can hear myself echoing. It's kind of hard to talk. Let me get a farther away from the computer. Yeah, or you can just turn the computer down. Yeah, you can just mute it. All right, let me do that. The strengths and weaknesses language has been removed, so... Oh, here, here well, it's, it's, still, it's still in the textbook that we're using, but... Sure. Uh, well, sure. okay. Yeah, um, but we're talking about the new standards. Yeah. They yeah, it, it, it didn't seem, it seemed like they would just put it in there because they had to put it in there because it all, the, all, I read the passage on strengths and weaknesses and it was like, uh, some people criticize evolution, but they're a bunch of asses, so just ignore them. <laughs> I want to copy that's, that's that. What I, got I would love it. to see that textbook, yes, that would be, that would be awesome. But the thing is, you know, that's the, what you just mentioned, and this is the reason why I th it eventually got, it was being so heavily challenged and voted down, was, you know, you said that you felt it was in there because it had to be. And, uh, and I think it had to be not for scientific reasons, but for political reasons, but to assuage the concerns of a group of uh, ideologues who don't like evolution and who don't want to feel that they're being, you know, not given equal time. Uh, so that and that's really that's the problem is that when you start to politicize children's education, and it just so happens that the subject that that is uh, that that whole concern is is centering around right now is evolutionary biology, then you're just you're running into problems. I mean, political agendas should not inform education. Facts should inform education. And unfortunately, the the, the big thing about science that makes it such a big party pooper and that people don't like science so much is that science doesn't care what your ideology is. It doesn't care what your pet belief is. It doesn't care that, you, that a person needs to believe in a god and have to have an idealized self-image projected on the universe to feel safe, blah, 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 blah. Science is just about the cold, hard facts. And that's the thing that makes a certain group of people very uncomfortable, but too bad, really. For them. I mean, that's just the way science is. Now, you know what makes me uncomfortable? What makes you These uncomfortable? These plastic chairs after about 90 minutes. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still okay on my chair, but then... Yeah. You, you well, I actually start early. Yeah. I actually, that's, that's probably why I shift, because yeah. I usually sit down, you know, 30 minutes before the show starts. Oh. So technically, I'm stuck in this plastic piece of crap for no, two no, you hours. bring a comfy pillow for your rear end. I will. Yes. A comfy pillow. I will bring a comfy pillow for my bottom. Yes, but we're sorry we didn't get you actually on the air, but we do want to make sure that, you know, the folks who are kind enough to call us and stay on hold for so long get to chat. But actually the lines are still full, and so. we're running out of time, and people are wanting to go to dinner, and there's a Super Bowl thing. Yeah. So I'm going to kick through real quick to whoever's left. I'm going to leave but it to you. I'm going to, right. I'm going to unplug. Thanks for Thanks. talking to us. So you're on the air, kind of. Hello. Hi. Hey. This is Mike in New York. I called up a few weeks ago to talk about uh, pet teas uh, who should not be named. I'm not going to say his name. I'm sorry? But, um, I'm trying to organize a group kind of like the ACA in New York, right. and I'm trying to figure out if you have any advice you can give me about ways that I can attract people to the group and what sort of how I can get the message out to people. Uh, yeah, actually, our group started with an ad in the newspaper, so I, I always go with that recommendation, um, although that was uh, 12 years ago next month. Um, oh, wow. But also, uh, now it's a lot better to look for groups that exist online, um, okay. meet up groups, or create groups online if you can't find them, meet up groups, Facebook groups, whatever, to see if you can recruit people uh, in your area that, that actually want to get together and perhaps talk online and then transition that into uh, a live group. 
I, it's, I think it's, you know, I don't know that there's many other options. Um, yeah. You can, you can try to take out, maybe stage an event, but I mean, that's a heck of a way to start a group. I mean, if you put together a yeah. big event uh, as your first thing by yourself, just to see how many skeptics you can get. Um, you can also try, where exactly are you? I'm in the capital region, Albany, Schenectady, all that, in New York. Um, we've got a page over at Iron Chariots. If you go to ironchariots.org, that people had started uh, posting where their local groups were. Also, okay. if you go to, like, um, American Atheist site and Freedom for Religion Foundation site, uh, might have one. I'm not positive. Um, but also Center for Inquiry and others, you know, they'll have links to local groups or at least some information about it. But, yeah, that's, that's about as much as I can give. There's also a guy who started the Atheist Community of Topeka in Kansas who we had on uh, the nonprofits uh, last year, a couple months ago. He talked about this a little bit. And uh, he probably has better advice than I do because he started this up recently uh, okay. from scratch, whereas I'm a latecomer to a group that's been around. And I, yeah, I just, you're from back in the wee years of the Internet. Yeah, I just come on TV and talk. <laughs> oh, look, that's awesome. Wait, can I move here? Then it looks like I have green hair. <laughs> ah. yeah, superpowers. It was super atheist. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, that's it. I got to go. There's uh, a bunch right. of stuff going on. We'll be back again in two weeks. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.